Okay, well, so new week, new day, and it's been a red one. So today is uh, Monday, the seventh of November, and it's uh, we're exactly well. It's day five of the trading uh, trading month. Uh, we've got a few uh, few holidays later this uh, this month as well. So just bear that in mind. We've got Thanksgiving uh, and, uh, and 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 Black Fridays or a half day uh, later in this month. But we've got a couple of weeks before that. So we've still got uh, we've still got plenty of time to make it up. So we had a good day on Friday. If, if for those of you that uh, were unsure, go back and, and watch some of the trades on the trade recap from Friday. Uh, we've not had a great day today, and it's my own fault. I got greedy with uh, with Facebook or Meta. Uh, so other than that, I mean, I traded Meta both long and short, and went in for pretty much maximum buying power that I had. Uh, to try and make some good some good money to start the week, and uh, we lost eleven thousand uh, to the long side. We lost nearly five thousand to uh, to the short side. So fifteen thousand in total uh, on uh, well, actually sixteen thousand in total on uh, on on Meta. So that that wasn't great, but we did make six six and a half thousand on Veru back. We made um, a little over three and a half thousand on GCT and DWAC. We made uh, fifteen hundred dollars and, and, and just fifty bucks on Side Spark to boot. So we made some of it back. Which means we're finishing today uh, a little over four thousand dollars in the hole. So we're back in the red. We've got another drawdown. Uh, we're still green on the month. Uh, we're not green on the week because it's a Monday, but we're still green on the month. But I'm kind of kicking myself because we would have had a really, really good day, but for taking the meta trade, we would have been over ten thousand dollars today if we hadn't taken those. Uh, if I hadn't traded meta, now meta, I have a strategy that works for me, particularly with the uh, low float, low cap, low float stocks, and meta isn't one of those. So I traded meta successfully to the downside. I shorted it uh, on earnings uh, when uh, just in the run up to earnings and, and, and on earnings day after hours, uh, I made quite a sizable amount of money shorting it. I did trade it a, a few days uh, later as well and managed to make money on it then as well. And I've been trading some of the mid caps whilst there's not been a lot of small cap running with good volume and good volatility in the reliable sense that I like to trade. So I've traded a few of the mid and large cap stocks in the meantime while I've got a, a whilst I'm using a large account, and uh, it's it's worked out you know reasonably well for me over the last couple of weeks. But I think it's a deviation from my strategy. It's a deviation from what I normally do and what I'm normally looking for. Whereas what's worked well for me today is trading DWAC. It's a low float stock. Um, GCT, low float stock. Um, Veru, low float stock. So these low float, low cap stocks are really what I need to concentrate. So that's my strategy. That's where it works. And I deviate from my strategy at my peril. I can, I've got only myself to blame. So trading meta and losing money, it's my own fault. So I'm just happy that we finished today less than five thousand dollars in the hole and i normally have uh, five thousand dollar days that's what my average uh, is across the year i normally have five thousand dollars a day as my as my goal so we should be able to make that up in in you know we'll make the draw down up tomorrow and then we'll start making back up uh, across the rest of the week hopefully we'll have another good day so let's let's take a look at the summary from um, where we started so we, we started off with um uh, gct so GCT, this was uh, pre-market. Let's go back to the pre-market session. And we got this on the move up at 8.30-ish on this move up here. So the move up, the pullback, moved back up again. So it was over $6, it moved up. And uh, we traded this again a little bit later on the day. Uh, as it started to pull back, we, we exited the position. But then's when we got uh, Veru, and I'll and I'll, sh I'll show you the uh, the first Veru trade. It was um, again this pre market on the way up, and we traded this all the way up, and then managed to uh, as it pulled back, we managed to managed to get out. So uh, we made um, b between those two trades, we were just shy of five thousand dollars, and and that was good and bad at the same time. It was good in the fact that we were literally a couple of hundred bucks away from gold. At one stage, I was I was actually over gold, uh, and then as I realised the gains, I, I, I 
didn't pull the trigger quick enough and uh, we lost well, a couple of hundred bucks and so we were just behind by I think about two hundred dollars or just over two hundred dollars or whatever it was so that kind of didn't sit well with me so i was uh, basically saying okay well now i need to trade something to make uh, make up that two hundred dollars uh, difference i need i need to be over five thousand uh, dollars so i was about 47 47 something or other and uh, then i i need to make five thousand dollars so we got into meta uh, as it moved up as it moved up it was going well we were, we were really well um well focused we went in large size and we added to our position we added to our position up at the top i was looking for the break of 96 uh, and then it pulled down and i held it way too long and ended up about fourteen thousand down on on meta we were so quite quite substantial so then as it broke with vwap it looked weak uh, so i went short and uh, whilst it went my way to start off with it then pulled back up and uh, i cut it sort of five thousand dollars uh, short now in hindsight and hindsight is 2020 vision when it comes to trading of course it is uh, if i take my position here for the break of the pre-market highs as, as i did add it to my position up here if i just held that and i've got an account that's large enough to do that we would have gone up and we would have made a sizable gain on that across the course of the day so but my average was about 90 95 30 or something like that and it went up to it's a good dollar and a half on on per share uh, so we could have made quite a quite a sizable amount of money i think we were seven and a half thousand shares ish hindsight 2020 vision as i say would i really want to be holding that and um down here seven and a half thousand shares uh, at uh, 93 but so that's another but 250 so 250 to make 150 that's not good risk reward that's not good uh, risk risk management although my risk management on this trade was just poor anyway so um, what, what am i going to do uh, so we did trade um a gct uh, a little bit later in the day when it started to uh, move back up so this moved back up again later in the day uh, and we were able to get this uh, this particular move here and get a, a little bit more so about two thousand dollars more on, on gct on, on on this move here and uh, we traded Veru into the close so uh, traded Veru as it popped up here and it pulled back so we didn't make a huge amount on on, on Veru here uh, and then the final trade we took was dwac into the close we got in here so kind of a double bottom w formation there but it was as it broke new highs we got in and we rode it up but it pulled back there and that's when we got out so it was probably probably like the last couple of minutes of uh, of, of the uh, of, of the close that we we, we got out there so we made fifteen hundred dollars on that and it should have been so much better so when i think that we were well, six sixteen thousand dollars down on meta across the two trades and we're finishing four thousand dollars down that means that we've traded close to uh, well very close to six twelve thousand uh, dollars to to the to the upside and we don't see the benefit of it today so i'm a little bit disappointed on that but it is what it is uh just got to be more selective with my trading a little bit more disciplined and that, that was Pretty much what went wrong with me today I, did, I didn't stay disciplined i didn't stick to my strategy that i normally do and I, I kind of got overconfident i was the first two trades went well for me the, the first two trades were, were, were on point and we got very close to goal and i could have just cut my, my day there 200 dollars down away from goal given that we had uh, a really good week last week we, we finished the week over twenty five thousand dollars to the good so if i'd just taken the 48 47 4800 that, that we had and then just wrapped it up there after the uh, after the live stream not taking any more trades we could have been if we'd not taken the the, the meta trade we could have been 35k up but hey look woulda shoulda coulda i'll be back at it tomorrow 90 minutes before the market opens that's 1 p.m. in Dublin and the UK. So for those of you that were joining me at, uh, at midday last week, it's because 
the US has finally caught up with daylight saving. They put the clocks back this last weekend. Uh, so that's 8 a.m. as it always has been in uh, East Coast or, or New York time. So come join me tomorrow. We'll do it all over again. The first 90 or oh, last 90 minutes of uh, of, of the pre-market session, first uh, 60 minutes of uh, of the actual open, and uh, let's see if we can't clear this straw down from today. Unfortunate as it was. See you then. Enjoy the rest of your evening. 6:25. Go on. I'll take a position. Really should have got in at 6.20, but we'll see. Lee Autos is moving up, yeah. A lot of these um, Chinese stocks deciding to move up today. Baba didn't hold its moves. It moved up to $72, didn't hold. Perfect is now top of the momentum scanners, but on low volume. So just be careful with that one. EWAC, still watching that, but it's pulling back. There's not a huge amount of, uh, of things moving this morning. But what is moving? We've got probably two stocks at the moment that are meeting my criteria for a trade. One is GCT, which I'm actually in right now, and the other is DWAC, but DWAC is getting re got rejected at $23, uh, which is where I said it needs to be over the VWAP. I did say it needs to get over $23 and hold for me to trade it uh, over the VWAP but it got rejected at that very area. So we'll see if it comes back, uh, it comes back around later. Uh, the, the, the simple answer to that is look at the price. Very few of these Very few of these stocks that are, are below a certain price, uh, the, 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 let's face it, they're, they're garbage companies. They're, they're garbage. They are garbage stocks. They There's a reason why the price to where they are. Let's have a quick look at an RBO. Long term, it's a $2 stock. I wouldn't hold anything long term that's $2. That's just me. I'm not saying it's not, you can't find a gem because you can but in most cases most of these stocks that are like two three four dollars they're just garbage they'll have a good run up you what you should be doing is ride the momentum on the way up and they'll go from two dollars to eight dollars and then just as quick they'll go from eight dollars to a dollar fifty and that's the story of these garbage stocks and there's a reason why they're priced at two dollars so i wouldn't advise anybody investing long term unless you know the company and you're really believing it long term and you think it's going to make a difference or whatever usually what happens with these companies and you tend to find a lot of the pharma uh, bioscience stocks um are, uh, are, are are like that bioscience stocks can be um low priced but they'll be very volatile uh, and depending on you know patents fda test results all, all this kind of stuff uh, they can have really good really good days and really bad days Yeah, I know it's a micro float, but this is the whole point is if it's a micro float, low float, low, low price, they're usually good for riding intraday momentum, maybe a swing. Um, 
I'm just going to lock in half of that for now. Uh, maybe a swing trade. They're not usually good for holding long term. Okay. So if this breaks a new low, first candle breaks a new low is the is the out. That's my rule of thumb. This got a red candle pulling back a little bit there. It's a reversal indicator, but now it's like okay. If it breaks a new low, i.e., if it re reaches the low of the previous candle, that's my sign to exit. Microfloat stocks are very often because a lot of them they'll either go out of business or they'll get acquired. That's 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 the life cycle of a microfloat stock. It either goes out of business or it gets acquired. There we go. We'll, we'll just we'll lock in the seven hundred and fifty dollars. That's that's not, not a bad base hit for for a couple of minutes. Didn't get filled. Did get filled eventually. It's gone in for two and a half thousand shares on very I know how how this can move. When it does move, caught between the spreads right now. The spread, so the spreads. There we go. That's the nice pump that we like. Right. Okay. So here's the um, here's the news on Veru. Traders circulate Friday in an FDA release entitled "Updated Agenda and Public Public Participation Formation." Meeting of the Pulmonary Allergy Drugs Advisory Committee announcement. Okay, so that's why this is moving. Lock in 500 bucks. Struggling at 13. Oh, we're over 13. Let's keep going. Locking in a little bit more. Moving my average cost up. Then locking in a bit more. Oh, there we go. I've got two and a half thousand shares in this and I'm already over goal on the day. That's a good day's trading. I'll get rid of that. So let's just take me beyond the back below goal so I can't um so I got out a little bit quicker. <laughs> 